Liz Truss' travel expenses as Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs have reached almost £2 million in recent months. Liz Truss has charged almost her £2 million for her overseas visits during her final months as Minister of Foreign Affairs. She provided public funding and asked government agencies to find efficiency savings. Secretary of State for Foreign Affairs Dominic Raab has spent on international travel in his six months leading up to the COVID pandemic, well in excess of his predecessor's £67,000, leading to global travel disruptions and face-to-face -face meetings between world leaders have been abandoned. Truss visits from January through her June also included those related to Russia's invasion of Ukraine. But a trip to Australia was £454,000, another trip to Washington DC was £229,000, and trips to Rwanda and Turkey were relatively cheap compared to the taxpayers' costs of just under £200,000. Ministers' travel expenses were much less. Lord Ahmad spent £6,787 on a visit to the United States as a minister earlier this year, but in April Vicky said he had to pay for his private charter flight when Ford made another trip to Malawi of this kind. Including he cost £2,937. Faced with a tight financial situation, Truss has ordered Whitehall's divisions to tackle the waste. She told Sky News last month, Truss travel expenses have led to accusations of hypocrisy from the Liberal Democrats. The party's foreign policy spokeswoman, Leila Moran, said the prime minister had literally made fun of taxpayers, adding that, if he flew around the world on ridiculously expensive visits, he would face brutal cuts in vital public services. Any hard-working family across the country. This is pure hypocrisy and shows once again how estranged you and your government are, Moran said. Johnson slowly poisoned arsenic for the Conservative Party. Liz Truss is an immediate cyanide. Parliament will reconvene this week after the most disastrous Conservative Party conference on memory, the self-sacrificing cannibal carnival. Then the dark, funny and bloody game really begins. On the paper, Liz Truss wins her 71st majority in the House. In reality, she is the Prime Minister with a less than zero majority. In effect, there is a hanging parliament where the Trussians aren't even the largest party. The good news is she doesn't have the numbers to bring her crazy ideas to life. The bad news is, with a dysfunctional government struggling to do much, we, a coup of sorts, didn't stop her and her prime minister from giving up trying to abolish the top tax rate, Suella said. Braverman makes ridiculous claims. They were forced to make this turn because giving more to those who already had enough in the midst of a livelihood crisis was frowned upon by the public and was not passed by Congress. It calmed the financial market somewhat and prevented an uprising by conservative MPs, but it also weakened the prime minister and his position. The Tories who defied the airwaves to advocate the abolition of the top tax feel very foolish. Former Tory chief of staff said. In this context, Truss would have been wise to be sensitive to conservative MPs and cautious about trying to pass parliament, but the country has admitted it has no say in her promotion. She instead acted in ways that suggested she was complacent or arrogantly ignoring the lack of support. Although she acted as if she were, in fact she was inaugurated by Tory activists against the wishes of most MPs and without an order from the public.